Why aren't there koalas in the Philippines? Why aren't there tarsiers in America? Why do I have to go to China or Hong Kong to see pandas? There are species found in almost all parts of the world. Species so rare, you'd have to travel across the world for. Why does that happen? Hey, it's Jazz, and this is Wildlife Matters. Today, we are going to answer these questions as we discuss distribution patterns among animals. The animals we see today exist in those areas because either they've been there naturally from the start or have been brought there because of humans. Native species are species that naturally live in an area and weren't introduced there by humans. Let's talk about two types of native species. The first is endemic species. Endemic species are species that appear in only one particular area. And it could be an area as big as an entire continent or as small as a small island, a single river, or even a lake. They can be found only in that area because they're not able to adapt as well as other animals. Usually, it's these species that are at a... The, blah, blah, blah. Usually, it's these species that are at a huge... Blah, blah, blah. I hate it, Usually, it's these species that are at a huge risk of extinction because of the fact that they require specific living conditions found in their habitat that cannot be found anywhere else. Destroying their habitat means that they have nowhere else to go. An example of an endemic species is the Tamara. Mindoro is the only place you can find them. So because of habitat destruction like slash and burn activities, they have quickly gone critically endangered. Indigenous species, on the contrary, are a type of native species that can be found in different places, unlike endemic species. And that's basically because they're better at adapting. So because they can adapt better, they can adjust to more surroundings. An example of this is the beaver, which you can find in North America, Europe, and Asia. And in some parts of North America, they've nearly disappeared because of overhunting. But in recent years, have been able to naturally return to places where they've once disappeared but are now plentiful again. Another example are Palawan otters, or Asian small clawed otters, which we mentioned in our last video. They are actually indigenous because you can find them in different parts of Asia, like southern China, southern India, Indonesia, and in Palawan, Philippines. So those are two types of native species. Now we're going to talk about invasive species. Invasive species are species that exist in an area because they were brought there by human influence, either on purpose or accidentally. And they are thriving so well in their new ecosystems that they actually end up negatively affecting it or destroying it. The American cockroach, or what we Filipinos like to call the flying epis, is actually an invasive species brought in through American ships or cargo that were bringing in their export to the Philippines. And as a result, they are now common house pests and like to eat and destroy items in our house. Mahogany trees were used in reforestation projects in the Philippines, but because they're not native, they ended up becoming invasive because they take in too much nutrients and as a result, other plants and trees are not able to grow. In Florida, Burmese pythons are invasive. There was a storm that destroyed a python breeding facility and a lot of their animals escaped, including Burmese pythons, which are now feeding on native species in the land. And it didn't take long for them to reproduce and reproduce until a lot of those species are eventually being wiped out. People usually get confused about the difference of invasive species and introduced species. Introduced species are also species that were introduced there with human influence, but unlike native species, do not have a negative impact on the ecosystem. In fact, some of them might even be beneficial. An example would be the Aldabra tortoise that were introduced in an island called Ilao Zigret in Mauritius. I hope I didn't butcher that. Ilao Zigret. But their native species of tortoises have gone extinct, as well as other animals like skinks and presumably the dodo bird. And that's because the ebony trees in that island were being over harvested. And without those trees, the animals ended up going extinct. And if you remember how an ecosystem works, Without those animals, there would be no one to eat the fruits of those trees 
and scatter the seeds all over the ground for more trees to grow again. And as a solution, they introduced the Aldabra tortoises. And thanks to them, ebony trees are starting to grow and multiply once more. European honeybees are also an example of introduced species, as they were introduced in North America and ever since have become critical for their crops and leave no negative impact on other pollinators. Studying the distribution of these species will help in their conservation because it helps us understand how to better protect them. Now that we know that there are endemic species, then we know that we have to protect these species because they are at risk of extinction. And now we know that there are species that aren't native but can be beneficial to an ecosystem if introduced to it in order to protect it as a whole, like the Aldabra tortoises. But at the same time, we now understand that introduced species can also end up being invasive. Now we know that we shouldn't just be carelessly releasing animals into the wild. It may seem a little complicated at times, but I really hope that I was able to simplify this well enough for you guys to understand. You know, a lot of people are making mistakes and even destroying ecosystems just because they didn't know these things. So making an episode about this is very, very important. Species have a domino effect on one another, whether it be good or bad. It's just a matter of understanding how, because every piece of wildlife matters.